Let's have a look at different examples of machine learning problems and different types of tasks that can be solved using machine learning. The first example that we have here is regression, which is trying to predict a continuous numeric value. And all of the examples that we'll see on this slide and the following slides are actually going to be examples of things gone wrong. So here we have an insurance company that was trying to predict a sickness severity score to determine if an individual may require additional care in the future. And unfortunately, the algorithm they used picked up on health costs or health spending as a proxy for health. And what was found by Obermeyer et al. is that different subpopulations with the same score actually had very different rates of chronic illnesses. The second example that we have here is classification, where we're trying to predict a label. And a common example of this would be a approved or denied scenario when you go to a bank and you apply for a loan. And a similar story to before, where different subpopulations actually ended up getting different denial or approval rates. And we can see this illustrated here on this chart, where on the x-axis we have the credit score, on the y-axis the denial rate, and you can see in different colors different subpopulations, and with the same score you can clearly tell there are different denial rate percentages. And keep in mind that these things, they're not done maliciously by programmers or machine learning engineers or data scientists. It can be a reflection of historical bias, or it can be that certain algorithms will pick up on majority groups and favor them more heavily. So we really need to think about what's going on here and implement bias mitigation and also do a good job at actually finding any bias that's already present in the data before it comes to the model training stage. So we'll be talking about this in more detail later. The next example that we have here now is the ranking where we want to order items to find the most relevant based on a user search query. And an example of this would be a job ranking where ranked lists actually they may amplify bias further because you're going to look at the top ranked results first and then those end up getting more likes, more views, and that can actually reinforce any bias if there is already bias present. So without fa fairness intervention, top ranked results can be skewed with respect to different sensitive attributes as well. And to mitigate this problem, we actually need to re-rank the lists according to different fairness criteria. And we'll be looking at those fairness criteria on day two, where we will introduce some mathematical notation of what it can mean to be fair in machine learning. The next example is recommendation, where it's all about finding relevant items based on past behavior without direct user input or without any search query in this case. Everything that we do online, every like, every dislike that we have on different platforms, even the click stream, the patterns, how long we spend on different sites, all of that can be used to make recommendations of different products, services, or even the ads that we can see are influenced by our online behavior. And the example that we have here is a targeted advertising example where Pitura, Stefanidis and Kutrika actually showed that different settings in the browser led to different ads being shown. And once again, to fix this kind of behavior, we would need to implement a bias mitigation technique and check what are really the recommendations that are being made to different subpopulations and then equalize a certain measure of fairness that we want to implement to mitigate any issues here and to avoid amplifying the bias further. The next example is clustering, where we said this is all about finding patterns or commonalities or similar characteristics in our data. And a scenario where clustering might be used with bias implications is in hiring, where you might want to group skill or experience to sort resumes more quickly. And what was found here by Abraham et al. is that unfortunately the callback rates actually did differ per group or per cluster. And what we want to do here in this example to mitigate is aim for proportional representation of different sensitive uh, demographic attributes per cluster. 
The final example I want to talk about is anomaly detection, where it's all about finding outliers or data points that look very different to the rest of the data that we have in any given data set. And the example that we have here is fraud. So that means we have a population where the majority of the population is behaving as is expected and then a very small fraction is engaging in fraudulent behavior. So the fraudulent behavior that was observed here is actually related to payments that were made from a government relief fund and the scale of the money allocation here makes traditional tracking almost impossible. So the idea would be to use a machine learning solution to actually identify fraudulent transactions or fraudulent requests. And what we need to be mindful of is that we don't overemphasize the fraudulent behavior in a certain subpopulation so that we specifically pick out one subpopulation as engaging in fraudulent behavior more than others. Uh, so we should not have any skew towards a particular group. And once again, there are different algorithms that can help us enforce this.